In Iceland today, we expect highs of 7 degrees Celsius, humidity at 78%, and a chance of rain. In Morocco, a high of 24 degrees, wind 6 miles per hour. In France, highs of 20 degrees, minimal precipitation, and 1,600 French citizens will die in the next 24 hours. In Estonia, there will be six divorces. In Australia, two homicides. In Brazil, 92 people will die in road traffic accidents. In India, 50 people by gun violence. In Poland, 13 people by suicide. In all, 150,000 humans will die today. 27,000 from cancer, 21,000 related to tobacco, and a heart attack will occur somewhere every 34 seconds. Moving into afternoon, globally, around 200 million land animals will be slaughtered. Primarily, that's chickens, ducks, and pigs. At least 1,000 whales and dolphins will die via bycatch and habitat loss. 55 earthquakes will occur. 65 million tons of fertile land will be lost to soil erosion. 71,000 hectares or 28,000 football fields of trees will be lost to deforestation. 10,000 square kilometers of land lost to desertification. And 27,000 tons of toxic chemicals will be released into the air, land, and water. By the evening, 150 species will have gone extinct, and 940 million humans will have spent the day without electricity, with 700 million humans continuing to live in extreme poverty. 3 million tons of food will be wasted or lost, that's around a third of all food produced, while 25,000 people will die of hunger today. 93 million tons of carbon dioxide and 1.5 million tons of methane will be released into the atmosphere. 2 billion tons of ice will have melted into the ocean. 90 million barrels of oil will have been pumped. $6 billion globally will have gone on military expenditure for the day, while the human population has been engaged in 40 simultaneous wars. By night, the moon will have receded from the Earth 0.0041 inches. The sun will now have used 51 trillion 840 million tons of hydrogen in the last 24 hours, at a rate of 600 million tons a second, with only one one billionth of that energy actually reaching the Earth. On Neptune, we expect temperatures of minus 225 degrees Celsius and winds of 1,600 miles per hour. On Jupiter, the Great Red Spot, an anticyclonic vortex, will continue to rage as it has done for the last four centuries, with wind speeds of 270 miles an hour. On Mercury, nothing will happen. On Enceladus, nothing will happen. 3.7 billion miles from the Sun, Pluto will remain frozen, barren, and dead. From the 100,000 galaxies of our galactic supercluster La Niakea, we expect a continued and total absence of messages suggesting intelligence, confirming we are entirely alone, with the speed of light rendering any and all other solar systems impossibly distant and inaccessible. And in the observable universe, at least, 270 million stars will die today. Tomorrow morning, we expect the world to be composed of 80 quindecillion molecules, or an 80 followed by 48 zeros, and that'll probably go on through to the evening. Earth's core will remain stable at a temperature of 5,500 degrees, producing a magnetic field of about 50 microteslas. In the Rio Grande, otters shall be otting. In Peru, marmosets will be doing marmoset stuff. In Antarctica, a family of emperor penguins will be taking the day off to enjoy each other's company. In the human kingdom, sex is likely to occur at least 120 million times across the Earth tomorrow, and thanks to a year of mutual shyness coming to an end, 119 million of those instances will be courtesy of a new couple in Portugal. 100,000 weddings will occur, 385,000 human babies will be born, 20 million humans will be celebrating their birthday, and 700 million children will be attending school. Adjusting for life expectancy and a growing population, tomorrow 300,000 humans will be experiencing the best day of their lives. 2 billion cups of coffee will be consumed, followed by 500 million litres of beer, 40 million litres of ice cream, and 130,000 bottles of Tabasco. At 11.52 a.m., Guido Marconi, aged four and a half, will be making his first attempt at imagining a color that doesn't exist yet. At 1.29 p.m., Philip Novak, aged 51, will be emptying his attic and find a childhood toy his father gave him when he was little. At 2.07 p.m., Antoni Novak, aged 86, will receive an email from his son after 10 years of silence between them, speaking of forgiveness and asking if they can reunite. The streets of Warsaw will vibrate with an old man's cheering for exactly 23 and one quarter seconds. Tomorrow, global life expectancy will increase by 73 days, and 126,000 people will be lifted out of poverty. By evening, 3,000 books will have been published, 4,000 new inventions patented, 12 billion phone calls made, and 300 billion emails sent. 
250 miles overhead, the International Space Station will be making 16 orbits of the Earth. 240,000 miles away, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter will be mapping out the Moon. 140 million miles away, on Mars, the Curiosity rover will bravely continue exploring Gale Crater. And in interstellar space, the Voyager probes will travel another million miles from the Earth, with greetings intended for alien ears for the next 1 billion years. Tomorrow, in our galaxy, a new star will be born. In the local galaxies, several hundred million more will be enjoying their first day of existence. The pillars of creation will continue to fluoresce in the Eagle Nebula, and for the next 3 million years, the black hole at the heart of our galaxy will remain a safe 27,000 light years distant. It is quite possible that somewhere amid the quintillions of planets of the cosmos, new life will begin. It is quite possible that somewhere, life will be searching for us. Further out into creation, dark matter will continue to matter, the Hubble constant remaining constant constant, the speed of light remaining fixed in a vacuum, the laws of nature remaining utterly mysterious, omnipotent and absolute, from tomorrow until the end of eternity. As in Iceland, we'll be expecting highs of 4 degrees, humidity of 75%, and not even the slimmest chance in fuck of finding out what our purpose is down here on the planet. And now, the sport.